My name is Dave Carr, and I'm here to talk about the 3D Toff Sims characterization of natural photonic crystals in glitter wing dragonfly wings. I'd like to thank my collaborators at Phi, Ashley Ellsworth, and Greg Fisher, and my collaborators down at the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil, and particularly Wesley Valeriano, who is the graduate student who took all the electron microscopy data and his advisor, Wagner Rodriguez, who reached out to us for this collaboration. So the title of the talk may lead to three questions in your mind. Why study a dragonfly wing? What is a photonic crystal? And what exactly is a glitter wing dragonfly? And so I'll work through these questions. So why study a dragonfly wing? In addition to it just being interesting to understand nature, the whole field of biomimicry looks to nature to help solve challenging engineering problems because nature has developed many very creative solutions to some very difficult problems. So what is a photonic crystal? A photonic crystal is a periodic optical nanostructure that affects the motion of photons. It requires alternating layers of high and low dielectric constant and it's useful for optical coatings and waveguides. So that leads to the final question, what is a glitter wing dragonfly? A glitter wing dragonfly is a dragonfly found in the Amazon rainforest. Here we can see the species range. It's primarily in Brazil, but extends into Bolivia and Paraguay. And the dragonfly is known to have transparent anterior wings or front wings and brightly colored iridescent posterior wings or rear wings, which gives it the name glitter wing. The colors are important for sexual recognition, mating, and territorial behavior. So let's take a little bit closer look at the wings. Uh, here we can see that the clear uh, anterior wing on the top, and then the different color wings for both the male and the female on the bottom. And what you can notice is the male posterior wings exhibit different colors from the top and bottom. So in technical terms, the ventral side is the bottom side, and it always appears red, and the dorsal side or top side has this iridescent rainbow color depending on where you are in the wing. So the question our collaborators were trying to answer is what is the source of this color? So they took one of these colored wings and did a FIB SEM cross section on them and here are the results and you can see uh, at the top the outer is the outer surface of the wing you can see the wax coating and then the FIB region for the wing cross section and there is a very distinct layered structure which is suggestive of a natural photonic crystal. So they took a look in the FIB and looked at different regions of the wing. They looked at a yellow-green, a blue, and a red region of the wing. And in each region, they saw a very distinct layered structure. When they started looking at the thicknesses of the various layers, they noticed that the same thickness uh, layers are on the bottom of every region of the wing. And this gives rise to the, rise to the red color from the bottom. It looks like the spacing layers is around 195 nanometers. But there were different thickness layers on the top, which gives rise to the varying colors seen from the top side. The layers, due to the contrast in ASEM, have different electronic densities. And to try and see this better, they took the same samples and performed cross-sectional TEM on them. Uh, the samples were osmium stained for increased contrast. And here you can see the results for the yellow, green, blue, and red sections of the wing. The spacing is consistent with what was seen in the SEM data, but it gives a much clearer visualization of the layers. Uh, one thing to note is that the osmium staining inverted the contrast, so areas that were dark in the SEM are now bright in the TEM image. The layer thicknesses can be modeled with varying refractive index to match the optical reflectance data. So now the question is, it appears to be a photonic crystal and they know the refractive index, but what is the chemistry giving rise to these changes? So to talk a little bit more about the wing chemistry, the initial hypothesis is that the wings are made of chitin with varying levels of melanin to give rise to the varying electronic density. Uh, chitin, the chemical structure formula here is seen here, and melanin, as is so often the case with uh, natural systems, is not a single compound, it's a broad term for a range of long changed natural pigments. The two most common uh, forms of melanin 
are eumelanin and pheomelanin, and their chemical structures can be seen here. Uh, essentially, they are conjugated ring structures and repeating units, but you can see that they are all organic-based. The pheomelanin has some sulfur, but everyone else is carbon, oxygen, nitrogen. So when they try to look at these wings with optical microscopy, Raman, and FTIR to get a, a handle on the chemistry, the results are inconclusive, and that's when they reached out to us for help. So we looked at the, the same wing samples using TOF sims. Uh, in particular, we ran on a PHI now TOF2 TOF sims parallel, parallel imaging MSMS. Uh, the schematic of the spectrometer is seen here on the left and a picture of the system on the right. We depth profile through these samples and used a 20 kV argon gas cluster ion beam for sputtering and a 30 kV bismuth 3 single plus analysis beam. For sample mounting, the wings were sandwiched between a just a backing plate and a wire mesh for mechanical support. No adhesives or other fixation was used. So we'll start with the positive ion depth profiles with the argon GCLE sputter. And we were able to see a very distinct periodic variation signals. On the left side, you can see that there was one periodicity. This was a blue section of the wing and we depth profile from the top. So this would be the dorsal area of the wing with the blue color. And then as we profile down through, we reach to the ventral side of the wing or the red area. So the uh, a main low mass mean signal in red is, if you're curious, uh, here are the peaks that were corresponded to this profile. And as a control, we also analyzed the clear section of the wing. And although we did see a layered structure it was much thinner and not nearly as complex. So that was a good control that this periodic variation that we were seeing in the signals uh, did correspond to what was giving rise to the photonic crystal. What is we see on the top is that the relative levels of sodium and potassium alternated with elevated relative levels of these low mass amines. So in TOF sims, we get a complete spectra at every pixel in every location in the depth profile. So we can then extract profiles from individual layers. So here is a high sodium layer, uh, the high signal for sodium potassium, and then you blow up and see a little bit of higher mass peaks. But even these peaks had a lot of sodium CN type addicts and potassium. And when we compare this to the chemistry from the amine layer, we get many, many more organic peaks and the peaks labeled in red are just the ones used for the depth profile. But uh, as you can see, there's very distinct chemical differences between layers. And the depth profiles of additional species correlate quite well. So you can pick almost any peak uh, labeled up there, and they will alternate very similar to the other uh, peaks. So we can do the same thing in the negative polarity to get a handle for ions that are stable as a negative species. And in particular, we got a very nice oscillation between the CN and CNO signals, the same periodicity as seen before. And once again, the clear uh, showed similar behavior. So the high CN layers correspond with the high sodium potassium layers, and the high CNO layers correspond with the high uh, mean layers. So again, we can extract spectra from various layers. So high CN layer, we see CN, CNO, and a bunch of CN type peaks, very little hydrogen chain species. And when we look at the high CNO layer, uh, interestingly, we see higher levels of chlorine and phosphate and sulfate. So naively, one might have guessed that a high sodium potassium layer would be where the other, the negative ionic species would be, but in this case, uh, the negative typical ionic species are actually in the uh, higher organic layer, or the amine containing layer, I should say. As I mentioned before, we have complete spectra at every pixel at every depth in the, the uh, profile, so we can also use this data to reconstruct 3D images. So uh, on the left here is the positive ion image and showing the alternating amine and sodium layers. And on the top, although it wasn't shown in the original profile, was uh, 
the wax layer. And so here that's image with just a, a simple hydrocarbon fragment. And we can do the same thing in negative. And uh, the wax had a higher, uh, some higher mass peaks in the negative and use one of those to show the wax capping layer in the 3D profile. And just for reference, here is the corresponding blue TM cross section. And what you can, see, you can see is that the layer structure is clearly evident in both polarities and is consistent with the TEM. And for reference, the bright osmium areas in the TM correlate with the higher amine uh, CNO layers. Uh, but to remind you, that was where the uh, SEM images were darker. So the higher amine CNO layers have a lower electronic density. So we're going to shift gears here just a little bit and talk about imaging those the submicron organic layers directly, uh, not from a 3D reconstruction. So this dragonfly wing is quite thin. It's only a micron to two thick. So if you tried to image the submicron organic layers directly, it'd be challenging just to as you're approaching the spatial resolution of the instrument. But even more problematic is that when you try to do that small of area, you rapidly degrade the organic uh, signal due to the increasing ion dose in a very small area. So one trick we can use is to, to look at the, the crater, the sputter crater sidewall, because on the sidewall the submicron layers are cross-sectioned at an angle at the edge. So this broadens the layers and makes them easier to image, and the amount of broadening is customizable by adjusting the sputter conditions. So let's take a look at what this looks like. So here's some ion images of the crater sidewall. So we're going to do an RGB overlay. And so here's the sodium signal, the summation of the low mass mean signal, and the potassium signal. And here we get a very nice over overlay showing the layer structure. And for reference point, on the left is the surface of the wing. And on the right is the uh, bottom of the wing, or actually the hole we sputter through the wing. And as these materials got quite thin, uh, they tend to disintegrate right as you're punching through. Uh, one thing to comment on here is, oh, well, this is a very good way to image the layer structure and actually take some spectra. You would not want to use this as a, for thickness measurements due to the, the non-uniform curve of the, uh, an uncertain curve of the, the sidewall. So again, we can do the same thing for the clear wing, and it's consistent. And here we see a little bit of a, a layer structure, but not nearly the repeating uh, structure to give us the natural photonic crystal and the bright colors. So one last comment is uh, nature is not always quite as simple as it looks. So it had a hidden surprise for us in these experiments. Is, so this is the depth profile you saw before. And as I mentioned, most of the species correlated quite well. But there was one species, the CH6 and 3 peak, that when you look at it carefully, it peaks uh, not with one of the other species, but actually at the interface between the two layers. Uh, but it doesn't peak at every interface, only every other interface. So what will appear to initially to be a bilayer structure is actually a trilayer structure. Uh, this can also be seen in the 3D image. So the CH6N3 could be a guanidinium cation, a fragment of the arginine amino acid, or another related molecule. Uh, we're not exactly sure at the moment. And our best guess is this is a wetting layer during growth, but its exact function in nature is unclear at this time. So to summarize, uh, we observe varying colors in glitter wing dragonflies due to the natural photonic crystals. FIB, SEM, TM can image the submicron layers and see differences in electronic densities, but it can't analyze the chemistry. TOF sims can analyze the 3D chemistry through both GCIB depth profiles and crater sidewall imaging. And we found alternating layers with higher relative levels of sodium, potassium, and CN, and higher relative layers of uh, low mass amine, CNO, and sulfate for the, the alternating layers. Uh, the CH6 and 3 peaks in between other layers form a trilayer structure. And we are currently running reference samples of chitin and melanin to see if the spectra from the various layers are a match and confirm the initial hypothesis of the wing chemistry. 
at, with that, I would like to thank you for your time.